Hello everyone and welcome to the how to choose the right optics for effective faction retail lighting webcast. My name is Olga Cheripenina, product marketing manager at Ledil, and I will be your host for today. In this webcast, Ledil's very own lighting guru, Tero Mäkinen, will tell you how to choose between a lens or reflector to make your fashion retail lighting inviting and appealing to your customers. You will also be introduced to best practice in lighting display windows, in-store displays and fitting rooms. At Ladil, we have allocated a lot of time and resources in collaborating with Lumina manufacturers and retail owners to design a range of optical solutions for effective fashion retail lighting. During the webcast, you can send questions and Tara will try to answer them at the end of the webcast. Uh, so without any more from me, here is Tero. Thank you, Olga. It's a pleasure to be here. Hello, everybody. Like Olga mentioned, uh, today we are going to have a wonderful 45 minutes. We will look through the different uh, use case examples the benefits of the reflectors and uh, compare them to the benefits of the lenses and we try to figure out which kind of optic will be the lucky winner in the retail lighting. So in the fashion retail lighting, the most important point is basically the goal of the entire lighting case is to try to guide your customers with the light. There is no point of having your shop open if nobody comes in and uh, there are so many things that can go wrong. During a daytime, we quite often think that there is no need for the uh, added artificial lighting in the shop windows, for example, because we have plenty of daylight. On the sunny day, we can have 100,000 lux on the outside easily. And basically what that makes of your shop is it will make uh, windows look like a dark caves unless you really illuminate them. So if you have only 500 locks on the window and entrance, it's very easy to walk by your shop. And we know nobody wants to have that. So window is a shop's business card. It's the invitation for the customers to walk into the store and uh, start looking for the products and perhaps maybe use some money for it. And as we all know, the first impressions matter. So the fancier you can make your shop, the even better. And uh, Good lighting has important roles to play. They create ambience, a vertical illuminance to illuminate your products on the display and basically lure the customers to join in. Uh, so what are the key elements for the effective fashion retail lighting? First of all, it has to match the brand and target customers. Nobody makes uh, general fashion retail stores anymore. Everybody's trying to differentiate from the competition and lighting is one of the key factors in doing executing this business. And a well-planned visual hierarchy makes shopping very easy and pleasant. Uh, nothing's more comfortable than walking to the shop where the lighting is actually guiding you like a virtual tour across the merchandise and uh, pointing out the latest uh, fashions and uh, etc. It also balances the ambient and accent lighting with a well-planned contrast and having effective vertical illumination helps you to navigate and orienteer in inside the space makes uh, the entire shopping experience much more comfortable. So how to how we can achieve this kind of uh, effective fashion retail lighting, we absolutely have to choose right optics. And we know we have a plenty of optics to choose. The optics you want to choose can be divided roughly into two different categories, uh, lenses and reflectors. Traditionally, if we think about shop lighting, it's almost entirely reflector based and uh, we have lots of people still thinking that uh, the only way to have a real shop lighting, the only way, the only luminaires looking like luminaires are the ones which have reflectors. But the situation is actually not so straightforward. We have a lots of things that we have to consider, such as, for example, control of the light. Uh, the benefits 
the absolute benefit of the lens compared against the reflectors is that with the reflectors we have full control of the light. With the reflectors we always have roughly about half of the light which is never touching any optical surfaces. So that means that there is absolutely no way we can control that light and it will just go forward. As you can imagine this is not optimum situation for having a the well-planned and well-executed lighting design in the shops. Uh, also beam angles are very significant. Uh, quite often in the retailer, retailers, they seem to have a preference on the very narrow beams because they make it very easy to highlight the goods on the display in the shop. On the other hand, uh, we can have many different kind of uh, narrow beams such as in this example, we have three different light distributions. You can see the uh, the appearance of the beam on the right, and you can see the intensity graph on the left, in, which is describing how uh, the spatial brightness distribution of the luminaires. And all of these light distributions, they the beam angle is 20 degree. So obviously we need something else. Uh, the other factors that we have to consider are the peak intensity. In a fashion retail lighting, especially with the spotlights, we kind of aim for the highest central uh, center beam, candle punch power, or center candle power. This uh, characteristics has many different names, but basically we are talking about what is the maximum brightness of the light in the middle of the beam. But on top of that, we also have to consider how wide the light is actually distributed and what is the field angle or cutoff angle of the light distribution. And as you can see, varying, having a variance in these different uh, characteristics can significantly change the appearance of that, let's say in this example, 20 degree beam. Also, when you are choosing the optics, uh, the optic size is a big factor uh, defining this. So uh, the bigger the optics, the narrower and brighter the beam can be. This is basically coming down from the laws of physics, uh, the size relationship between the light source and the optical output surface. There is a certain relationship and roughly the bigger your optics, the better you can control the light, the higher the center center candela beam can be. Uh, then when you go for the smaller optics, the beam angle usually gets wider and also your highest candela beam peak gets uh, lower. Of course, you can make the beam much narrower, uh, even with the smaller uh, optics, but then your efficiency is usually uh, reduced quite significantly. Uh, but this doesn't necessarily mean that the smallest optics are the not suitable for uh, retail lighting. As we can see shortly after, we have a couple of examples of using these uh, LISA 2 RS lenses on the on the display counter lighting. Um, and we also must uh, consider the shape of the light. Uh, here we can see the very typical reflector beam uh, can be quite general reflector. We have lots of examples like this and uh, the beam is really narrow as we can see how it's illuminating the statue in the middle. But what's very typical for the reflector is this weird arc shaped uh, bloom of light around the main beam. This is the light which is coming directly from the light source, never touching any optical surface. So this is the light that I mentioned uh, in the beginning, which is absolutely not in control. And uh, with the modern latest technology reflector designs, uh, such as our latest uh, Elise family, uh, we can actually achieve uh, a much smoother cutoff and uh, if we compare the previous reflector that was 13 degree beam angle, we compare into this medium reflector with the 25 degree beam angle. We can see that because of the smooth cutoff, the beam actually looks a lot more 
lot no, lot more nice. Uh, the the graduation of the light is much more subtle. It kind of blends in into a surroundings much easier. But also because of the wider beam, we have a lower center candle power that can be seen here on the statue that has a clearly lower illumination levels. But nevertheless, this kind of illumination is absolutely fantastic for certain type of shops, especially if you have uh, like a high key illumination in your shop and you want to have a low contrast lighting. More about that than after a couple of slides. Uh, then compared to the, these reflector examples, if we switch into a lens, we can immediately see uh, with this same 25 degree beam angle and uh, medium beam, we can immediately see the benefits of the lenses, how we can have total control of the light. We have absolutely uh, uh, no, hay, no stray light outside the main beam. The beam itself has a very soft and subtle cutoff. And this is very, uh, very nice beam for the general lighting when you want to uh, create the ambient light in your shop and have like a general illuminance. And then when you want to highlight the products on the display, for example, you really want to go for the RS beam, the narrowest possible beams as possible. And you can see how now the statue itself is perfectly, uh, it's really bathing in the light and uh, there's really intensive highlights on the statue. Also, the ambient light or surrounding light is reduced down to the minimum. We have absolutely no light going outside of beam, which helps you to isolate objects on the display and really create this uh, visual narrative that we always want to achieve when we are doing a lighting, well-designed lighting. Uh, but there's always a but, as we all know. So looking at this very narrow spotlight beam, uh, if we compare to that medium light that we had before, we can see the harsh shadows that are falling right down to this statue. Uh, for example, the shadow falling from the head on the shoulder, and we can see this high contrast that we are creating by having these very intense highlights and uh, almost total, totally dark shadows. And uh, sometimes this can create really weird uh, appear, weird situations. We definitely are not presenting the goods on the display with the, in the best possible way. And uh, generally, this kind of harsh shadows should be avoided. Uh, nevertheless, uh, some shops we may be actually aiming for the high contrast. So a little bit more about that. But anyway, we have, always have to remember if we choose a reflector or we choose a lens, it's always coming down to how we can create emotions, how we can make those customers wandering inside the shops, how we can make affect their uh, buying decisions, how we can actually make them to look into certain type of products that we really want them to you know, want their eyes to catch. And we have a couple of shop examples. The first one, uh, is a low contrast example. So in the beginning, um, in the previous slides, we were going through the comparing uh, reflector and the lens and the light distribution between these two. And I, I said that the reflectors have a lot of uh, stray light, which is not in control. Here in this type of shops, we are actually using that spill light of reflectors to our benefit by creating a shop which has a very airy light atmosphere. Uh, we call this a low contrast shop. So it's a very typical for many uh, clothing stores, uh, stores which are targeted to women, older people, which are not willing to create a very dramatic effect. Instead, they are more like uh, mainstream, easy access, uh, easy to go in, do your shopping, get out and uh, enjoy your life. So in this kind of boutique, it's very important we have uh, products well highlighted, yet still we want to create quite notable amount of ambience lighting. 
and we want to have like a very airy, nice, easy access uh, uh, surroundings. And in this example, we are using uh, reflector spotlights for highlighting the goods on display. As you can see, the suits hanging on the wall, they are the brighter. Uh, they have uh, much more light than uh, surrounding areas in the shops. Uh, also, the mannequins models uh, are highlighted properly. And then we have these linear luminaires, which are actually uh, providing general lighting. So it's quite nice, bright ambience. Um, and then we, of course, want to have another example, which is totally opposite. So now we are creating a high contrast example. So as you can see, we have the same shop, but uh, the atmosphere is quite different. So we suddenly jumped from the very nice airy atmosphere into this dark, gloomy, almost nightclub looking atmosphere, which is creating a much more tension, more suitable maybe for some trendy, uh, trendy uh, merchandise and a younger audience where we really want to create this strong, bold narrative using light. And in this kind of shop, if we try to use the reflectors uh, like we did in the previous shop, you can imagine having these cones of light on the wall, they will actually become a feature and uh, they will basically ruin the entire light. So we want to have a lenses definitely because of the light control. We want to have a narrow, well-focused beams, which are uh, really focusing the light on the products on the display. And uh, we absolutely want to minimize the spill light because that will ruin the contrast that will uh, illuminate our shadows and we are not getting this effect. And for the general lighting, as you can see, if you look at the floor of the shop, exam for example, you can immediately notice that we actually have quite a lot of light in this shop, although it looks very dark, but it, that's not the situation. And that's because we are using the linear dark light optics uh, for the general lighting. We are using these uh, uh, daisy linear lights. They don't steal the attention from the merchandise or cause any glare against the back dark back background but we still have a very high general illumination levels. So how did we achieve this? We achieve using the track lights with our Ilona family lenses. Uh, so we have these uh, 50 millimeter diameter miniature track lights, eight and a half watts. So you want to use kind of lots of them, but uh, these are excellent uh, optics for this uh, high contrast shops they because you, of your narrow beam angles and a very high intensity candela peak you can really achieve this uh, high illuminance on the products without ruining the rest of the lighting in your shop and for general lighting for creating that ambience without ruining your high contrast setup you want to use uh, linear luminaires with the daisy family of uh, dark light optics you get quite a lot of light without absolutely no glare at all and a very high efficiency. And this type of optics, they are doing a fantastic job hiding the dots and uh, hiding the light sources from the viewers. So they are fantastic for these high contrast setups. Uh, example from the world, how to achieve this. Uh, here's a, actually a supermarket, so this is not the fashion retail, but uh, but basically the lighting concept itself is the same. So we have a dark surroundings. We are focusing the light on the goods on the show, but uh, on display, but uh, and keeping it away from the surroundings. And we have this exciting atmosphere here, which is creating a lot of tension and maybe more trendy appearance. So let's look at some of the other uh, areas in the on the fashion retail lighting uh, display windows, hugely important area of your shop and also almost always neglected. So we see lots of even trendy high brand shops focusing and investing a lot on the illumination of the shop interiors. And then we totally forget uh, display window lighting. We have 
results with the lots of awkward shadows, weird shapes and uh, just general blunt light everywhere in the window. Uh, this is not the bad example because we have a lots of uh, lots of light here, so you can see the mannequins are clearly visible even during a brightest daylight. Although uh, we have lots of weird shadows and other harsh object um, in the window, which is not creating optimal backdrop for this, and uh, there's a lot of visual clutter and noise also visible. But quite often. If we walk on the streets and we look at the windows, the situation is like this. So we have uh, a window and if we adjust into a daylight intensity, the results are more or, more or less like this. So we have something dark and gloomy behind the glass. The products are not so visible and obviously we must do something. And we can start with the reflectors. So Reflectors are, like I said, traditional spotlights, traditional way of illuminating, but uh, reflectors have these spill lights. So against the solid background, uh, if you have a backdrop in your window, the reflectors easily can create a very chaotic effect that we can see here. We have lots of uh, highlights, we have lots of unwanted shadows, and uh, behind this, if we look at this window, our focus, is more focused on what is happening behind these mannequins instead of what is happening, what are the things that they are wearing or etc. So uh, this must be kept in mind when you are designing lighting with the reflectors. On the other hand, if you have open display window, that means the window without backdrop. So uh, the backdrop of your window is the shop then the uncontrolled light from the reflectors is not necessarily a problem because you have that brightly illuminated shop behind your window and that becomes part of the window and if the illumination in the shop is done in exciting way that actually can act like a lure uh, pulling people into looking in the window on the other hand uh, most of the cases we prefer to use lenses and when we are using lenses, we have a lot more improved situation with the backdrops. We don't have the spill light anymore. So there is no uncontrolled light doing unwanted things. And we can see how much smoother and more calm appearance the backdrop is. And now immediately our focus is more pulled in into these goods on the display. On the other hand, we still have the harsh shadow problem that we had with the reflectors, so we want to make something else. And the best way to reduce the shadows is to uh, increase the size of your luminaire so that you have a lot more light coming from many different directions. And that is very effective uh, washing away the shadows like we see here. So now we are using uh, one linear luminaire which is going across the entire length of the window and it's mounted in the front of the windowsill and uh, we are using wall washing beam to create this very smooth uniform illuminance. But now we are missing our highlights, so we are not actually creating any exciting visual narrative. Although the appearance is extremely smooth, very nice, uh, calm, uh, there is absolutely nothing creating contrast, creating attention which can attract passer by, uh, attention of the passerbys. So, uh, we, what we can do is we can actually combine these two effects. So we have a spotlight providing a high, highlights, and we have this long linear luminaire, which is actually. Uh, which is uh, reducing the contrast. And we come up with this illumination where the products on the display are the brightest spot in the field of view. So our focus is immediately pulled into a places where we really want it. And the shadows are now reduced to acceptable level. There is no distracting contrast in the window anymore. And we have very nice overall lighting. 
But of course, window is just one part of your shop. So very important feature of every shop is entrance because that's where the customers are coming in and we want to illuminate those areas also so we put in a couple of down lights to illuminate the entrance make it uh, differ from the general illuminance in the area and uh, now the people now it's very easy for customers first you get their attention on the window and then when they see something interesting they want to get into the shop to look more in detail uh, the next thing you really want to point out using well-designed illumination is to get their attention and to ensure that you are getting their attention. We can use also some decorative lighting, like for example, here we are using Leia elliptical beams, creating these architectural features, which immediately pull people's attention close to the door and then the dull light is finalizing the design. So the luminaires we were using in this case were track lights with uh, brand new Sakura silicon lenses. Uh, in the window, shop window lighting, uh, because you must must be able to match with the daylight and you are constantly competing against the daylight. So we really must have high intensity spotlights. Uh, high intensity spotlights. Uh, quite often means high power. High power means high temperature. High temperature means uh, short lifetime and lots of problems with uh, many of the traditional optics. Ledil being the first uh, in a way, uh, first company, optics company to start using liquid silicon rubbers, uh, we have created these Sakura uh, spotlight lenses that can withstand really high temperatures and yet still they can provide the perfect light control of the of the lenses so they are perfect choice for the window shop window lighting then um, once you get your customer lured into the shop and you want to show them uh, more details about the products quite often we get into in-store displays in-store displays are separate illumined lighting case which is uh, sometimes can be very challenging. You have to create the highlights to make them uh, make them uh, being at, uh, at distinctive from the general shop illumination. You really want to in, uh, show the displayed products in the best possible light. But the variety of the products that are in this in-store displays, such as shelves, for example, can be ranging quite a lot also they need to adopt in the shop lighting in general but they also need to uh, appear and here we have a very typical shelf lighting example so we quite often uh, these uh, display shelves they have integrated luminous such as here we are using uh, small spotlights like miniature spotlights done with the Leila medium beam. You don't need super narrow beams in these kind of applications because uh, distance is so small. So usually you want to have some wider beams. Uh, what we can achieve with these spotlights is uh, if we have a same shelf, in both of these cases up and down, we are using wall washing for the vertical illuminance uh, generally in the shop but if we look at the shelves having only this wall washing light as you can see in the example in the below uh, we can immediately spot out what is the problem the problem is that the the products on the display and the lower lower shelves they are almost totally in the darkness so there is absolutely no way you can see them and absolutely no way they are presented in the best possible way if we compare this into upper example how they uh, what is the dramatic difference here you can see that the these shoes they clearly pop out in the shop and uh, they become a feature of themselves and you can see how well they are being displayed and i can assure this is very effective way of uh, creating more revenue in your shop by using good lighting 
However, the situation may change completely if our products are looking like this. And now you can understand why shelf lighting is such a challenging way. So now in the bottom example, which is the bad, bad example, we have this same in integrated lighting and we have the luminaires which are integrated into a, a shelf construction, illuminating the providing this very nice uh, modeling uh, front lighting into a product. The problem is that the products themselves are such a big piles of uh, towels or bed sheets in this example, so that they are actually blocking the shelf lighting in uh, to uh, totally. And uh, you can see we have this, uh, just these weird highlights on the topmost of the items and the rest of the items are actually looking quite blunt. So in these kind of examples, uh, the wall washing uh, from the shop is actually a much better way of illuminating your shop. And uh, so as you can see, uh, inside shop display lighting, uh, you must, it should be flexible enough to adopt, adopt into these different kind of uh, lighting schemes. One of the ways you can illuminate the products is using the micro luminaires, such as this one, using our uh, using Lidl's uh, Lysa 3 lenses. Lysa 3 is extremely small; it's just 10 millimeter in diameter. So you can create these uh, like miniature spotlights that you can easily put inside the display case, such as for example here. This can be a jewelry shop. Uh, we don't have so many jewelries in our offices, but we have plenty of optics, so we decided to show optics. And uh, we have a spotlight lenses on the on this display case, illuminating the products on the displays. And as we can see, uh, using these microluminaires uh, and a spotlight beam, we are creating like a shop in the shop. We have products in the really nice high intensity light with the very good pleasant appearance. There's a lot of brilliance in these optics, which is of course making them look uh, very uh, interesting. But what we can also see is we have a plenty of awkward shadows and because these distances inside these display cases are such small and the contrast ratios are usually so high so we have these quite rather ugly multiple shadows and they are creating a really restless backdrop onto these products and uh, to, to uh, counteract that effect we can do exactly the same thing as we did in the shop window. So we can have linear lenses. Now we are creating a much more pleasant, much more soft uh, illumination using again the linear lenses which are covering the entire display case. So now we have very nice soft lighting, uh, but we are not having lots of brilliance. We are not having lots of drama. In this case, we are using a linear linear lights with the wall washing light distribution mounted at the corners of the display case. And we get this uh, really uniform smooth light distribution. On the other hand, it's a little bit dull. So we want to have still a little bit more contrast. We want to have a little bit more uh, visual tension in this display case to create a little bit more drama and make the products more interesting. So we can combine this. Uh, basically, we are uh, having exactly the same lighting solution as we did in the shop window case. Here we don't need to compete against the daylight, so the lighting intensity can be reduced to a more comfortable level. But as you can see, compared to the previous linear lighting example, now we are really having that brilliance back again, but we don't have those ugly shadows and really these things they look nice in this case. Uh, one of the most dangerous places in the in the fashion, especially in the fashion retail are fitting rooms. Uh, 
60% of all the shopping decisions are done in the fitting rooms of the fashion shops. And very appealing fitting room uh, lighting eliminates all the distracting shadows and you have a much more accurate, more positive impression of the clothing, uh, which directly uh, turns into a revenue of these shops. Uh, so therefore the good lighting is essential. Uh, this is not so much an example of good lighting, but unfortunately this is quite often the reality or this case. Uh, very often many fitting rooms, they only have down lights casting these very unflattering high contrast shadows on the customers. Uh, we all know the situations. Uh, so that is definitely not optimum and what's especially uh, kind of annoying in this kind of lighting schemes is that uh, the, the products that the customer tries to look at and customer tries to make a shopping decision are actually not illuminated in a good way. Good way. They are not illuminated in a good light. Instead, we have a, the most brightest point is the head of the customer and quite often it's combined with these uh, gloomy zombie shadows under the eyes making people basically run away so we want to have something else and what we what is the make or break uh, factor in the fitting room illumination is the vertical lighting so we absolutely want to have a vertical illumination in the fitting rooms uh, adding Linear diffusers creates a very pleasant and uniform lighting without shadows. But linear diffusers come with the caveat, so quite often they are they become the brightest feature in the fitting room. Fitting rooms very often they are awfully small, and uh, if you have a wide opaque diffuser uh, having a brightest surface intensity in the fitting room and that is sitting uh, right next to your face uh, less than half a meter away from your eyes it it, uh, it it can be experienced as a very glary and uh, all the and uh, the glare pr caused by these uh, linear diffusers uh, can easily distract you from uh, from the seeing the clothes that you are actually trying to fit. So the lights uh, meant for the vertical illumination, they shouldn't be too bright, uh, you know, but yet you still need to have adequate illuminance level uh, in the shop. And uh, how you can achieve adequate illuminance level without having too bright surfaces, you must use large enough light sources. And uh, you must increase the light source and uh, uh, you also must ensure that the light is coming from an angle that doesn't really cause a glare. For example, in here we are using uh, these two linear uh, luminaires made with the Linda extra wide beams and we are mainly trying to illuminate the walls aside of the customer and uh, so the two-thirds of the beam is actually illuminating the uh, light colored walls in the fitting room and one-third is illuminating the customer from both of the sides and this will really give us a nice pleasant uh, flat illumination for the customer and the clothes that customer is trying. Uh, we don't have these uh, any distractions and uh, because most of the fitting room is actually illuminated in such a high uh, high level, we are reducing contrast and while we are reducing contrast, we are actually also reducing glare and this is really giving the ideal situation. Of course, we must not forget that we are using a molly for the downlight and this is really the way the fitting rooms should be illuminated. So that's uh, uh, and this this type of lighting is designed for minimizing the glare of the customer. 
So that was a short run through of the shops, uh, shop lighting in general, and especially looking into uh, a different setups that we have. So to summarize, we have a shop general lighting that can be either low contrast for this airy, nice uh, atmosphere. It can be high contrast. Both of these are shop general lighting and general illumination in the shops. Uh, then outside the general lighting, we want to illuminate the products inside the shops, such as shelves, good products displayed on the shelves, and which depending on the depending on the product size can be either integrated into the shelves or sometimes the best uh, best solution for shelf lighting can be integrated into shop lighting itself. We want to illuminate the display cases in the best possible way, providing a lots of brilliance in the display cases. And uh, we can achieve that by combining the bright point sources with the larger area sources, larger area sources washing out the shadows, and then bright point sources providing that brilliance and uh, we want to illuminate the fitting rooms in the best possible way avoiding high contrast avoiding glare keeping in mind that the customers will always be very close to the luminous which is increasing the risk of the glare and of course we want to have that best possible entrance best possible business card of the shop providing this uh, uh, very nice, uh, well thought out, very nice uh, illumination, shop window illumination without uh, any distracting shadows, but maintaining the well thought out, well laid out contrast. So that was a quick summary of the shop lighting. Now I think uh, it's time for the questions. We have any? Uh Thank you, Tero, for yet another interesting and thought-provoking presentation. Uh, and I would like also to let you know that uh, in a few days' time, you will get email uh, with a link uh, to recording of the webcast. Uh, and yes, so we have got a couple of questions uh, and uh, you still have time to, to send us questions that we can answer. We have about 15 minutes left, but let's see what we have. Uh, so, Tero, should I go for lens or reflector? Well, uh, it depends. I mean, like you saw in the presentation, both of these solutions are perfectly fine. We have lots of customers preferring reflectors because, well, as we all know, if we think about the luminar, what kind of luminar we have, what is this image of luminar we have in our head? In our head? That is the luminar, of course, with the reflector. But then on the other hand, um, uh, especially if we go for high contrast shops uh, with the uh, dark overall appearance, then the lenses clearly have these benefits. But in a general, uh, depends on your project. Uh, so both reflectors uh, lenses can be used. They are both are fine and uh, should be the decision whether to go with the lenses or reflectors or both or perhaps linear optics uh, the decision between those lighting solutions should be done case by case based on the project requirements uh, okay thank you tara uh, so next question uh, in the fitting room uh, could you put the lights behind the mirror to reduce the glare um, well, we have seen some mirrors that have lights integrated in the mirror. Uh, and in theory, that is a fantastic solution if you can hide the light source. But on the other hand, uh, then we will not have any light coming from the mirrors. Or, so I would say that the in theory, that's the best possible way to have just light magically appearing from somewhere. 
uh, through the mirror without seeing the light source. In practice, quite often it's sometimes introducing even more glare. So I personally would rather not take that kind of solution. Instead, I would choose to uh, mount the luminaires close to the mirror so that the, the customer is illuminated from the front, from the direction of the mirror, but also making sure, ensuring that there is no uh, excessively bright light sources immediately in the field of uh, uh, the area where we, our eyes are focused on the on the clear vision. Uh, Tero, in your opinion, is there any one lens uh, in uh, your current portfolio that stands out at the moment? <laughs> we have so many good ones, but uh, if I if I have to choose one. Uh, I think I would go for Ilona at the moment because it's a relatively compact, compact size. So 50 millimeter diameter seems to fit quite well into a lots of luminaires and uh, you don't have any big bulky luminaires in your shop. And also Ilona is really, I would say it's perhaps the one of the first lenses, first optics uh, coming from Ledil, which is uh, really uh, designed specifically for retail lighting, keeping the requirements of retail lighting uh, in mind. As we discussed in the beginning of the presentation, we really want to have something, uh, something with uh, the narrow beams. We really want to have a high candle peak with a good control of the spill light and uh, minimized uh, light outside the beam to really achieve that well designed, well thought out lighting layout. And I think Ilona is answering all of those requests. Uh, great. Uh, so the next one, um, shall we see high contrast lighting elsewhere, for example, in grocery stores or in hypermarkets in the future? Well, funnily, the uh, reference example we have, this is uh, from Italy and uh, this is a grocery store. And actually this is not the first high contrast grocery store I have seen. Uh, there's also some examples in South Africa, for example. So I think this is perhaps a emerging trend to having a grocery stores like this. Of course, uh, um, big uh, brand chains like uh, Abercrombie and Fitch, for example, is very well known for this type of lighting. So that's where the idea is originating. But definitely in lighting industry, uh, people are always looking for something new, something which is innovative. And uh, we look into different lighting schemes, then we bring those lighting schemes into a new environment and we create something uh, absolutely new and uh, fantastic, exciting. And uh, if we talk about retail lighting, then it's all about excitement. It's about creating emotions with light. Uh, OK, the next one. So what is the most secure mounting of the lens, uh, tape or pins? Mm, well, I think we are talking about the small miniature lenses, like in these uh, display cases using uh, these miniature lenses for micro luminaires. Uh, the tape we are using is automotive grade, uh, really strong urethane tape uh, uh, accepted for automotive use and uh, high temperatures, uh, UV exposure, etc. Uh, I would choose this, uh, but if you are concerned about uh, the long time uh, reliance of the tape, then maybe I would use a drop of glue, for example, to ensure that the, 
the lenses are not falling down. Or even better so, since there's always a luminary body uh, out, uh, around surrounding the optics. So in those cases, uh, you, that you can integrate such mechanical features into the luminar housing itself. Okay, Tara, there is one question. Let me ask it. I'm not sure if you know the answer, but how do the lenses affect TM30 data? Uh, or LM30? At least here it's written TM30. Oh, TM. Sorry, TM. I heard yeah. TM. Uh, short answer is I don't know. <laughs> uh, longer answer, uh, I think this is an interesting question and we definitely must uh, look this more in detail. So uh, I think uh, this is something that we can maybe touch on uh, following seminar uh, webinars or webcasts uh, or maybe we, we will uh, publish an application note. Definitely uh, it's interesting question and we want to find out. So I think we will look into this. Okay, and the next one, uh, what glue would you recommend? If you go to our web page, ledil.com, and uh, there is a support page you can find on the list of approved materials, you can find uh, quite a few uh, glues that we have tested. Uh, we test all the materials that we use, but we also test a lot of uh, materials which are being used to in combination with our optics. And uh, on our web page in the application area, you can find the glues that we have found suitable and uh, they are compatible with our optics, but also we have ensured that there is absolutely nothing which is harming the LEDs. So that's the easiest way to find. I'm very terrible remember, remembering these uh, brand names of the different glues. So, so I'm also using Ladil website for this kind of information. Okay, so that actually was the last question. So if uh, no more questions, uh, then it only remains uh, for me to thank you for your participation. And I would like to remind you once again that we will send an email with the link to the webcast in a couple of days time. Thank you and have a great day or evening and goodbye for now. Thank you also from my behalf and uh, as always, it was a pleasure to be talking with you. I know there's plenty of you, although I don't see anyone right now. So thank you. And uh, if you have any further questions, you know where to contact me. Send an email, uh, contact us and uh, we can follow up. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.